the challenges of you. O youth in the path of Islam, stand tall. O youth in the path of Islam, stand tall. With patience and prayer, you shall not fall. With patience and prayer, you shall not fall. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habibullah Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabiullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah Honorable viewers of Madani channel Marhaba once again to this beautiful silsila called the challenges of youth. Here we focus on various challenges that youth do experience and we try to find solutions for these problems for indeed with youth comes a lot of challenges. And yes, the elderly have experience on their side. However, youth don't have that experience on their side and therefore we try to help you and work with you through these challenges of youth through Islamic guidance, guidance from the Quran, guidance from the Hadith, Dini guidance, and inshallah Azza wa Jal, through that we will be able to get ahead and we will be able to overcome these challenges that we may face. However, before we go into today's topic, today's topic is an important topic, a very important topic, discussing a problem that is faced worldwide amongst youth, yes, sometimes even among the elderly, but a worldwide problem and we're going to discuss that just after this kalam so please you stay tuned for this kalam and inshallah azza wa jal after this kalam we're going to go into the details of today's topic for now stay tuned and listen to the naat of the beloved nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Good 
में बता Subhanallah, Subhanallah Azza wa Jal, a beautiful kalam, a beautiful recitation of Ma'at of our beloved master Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the king of Madinatul Munawwara. In fact, we can say the king of the world and the king of our hearts. Our beloved master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how much of joy, how much of joy it brings to us to listen to his beautiful praises and the praises of his beautiful city, mashallah, the yearning it creates within us as believers to visit the city of Medina Tul Munawwara and ultimately also to see the blessed face of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us all, grant you all, Hazri of Medina Tul Munawwara time and time again and on the day of judgment may Allah keep us close to his beloved sallallahu alayhi now, dear viewers of Madini channel, as we discussed just before the kalam, that we were going to discuss a problem that is faced worldwide. And this problem is the problem of bullying. The problem of bullying. Now, yes, many of us may have been in those situations where we were bullied at some phase, at some stage. However, Many of us may not even realize it, but there could have been times when we were actually the bullies. When we were actually the bullies, those who were bullying other people. And that indeed is a very sad thing. Bullying is using some sort of force, some sort of force that we use, some sort of superiority or a strength that we have to make someone feel little and to push someone to do certain things for us or to intimidate people and this is something that is not loved by the sharia the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the law of the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam our blessed sharia does not like this 
bullying is actually it's one of the ways of oppression we can say because we are using the force that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us it's a blessing that Allah azza wa jal gave us strength it's a blessing that Allah azza wa jal gave us a certain amount of power and if we are using that in a way in which it's not supposed to be used then we are we are oppressing others we are being cruel to others and yes this is so dangerous really it is so dangerous and some of us may be thinking that yes it's dangerous for the next person but today i'm here to tell you as well that it's not just dangerous for the next person it's dangerous for us ourselves yes it is dangerous for us ourselves because although we may feel that we are using our force against someone else but remember that also has a repercussion that also has a repercussion it's also going to affect us now we may just think that what repercussion can it have? Why? Because we are the ones that are in power. We are the ones that have the power. We have the might. We have the ability to exert force on the next person. So how is that that person now going to harm us? That person is in a position which is seemingly inferior to our position. However, remember the saying of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, and you hear this time and time again in so many masajid across the world. During the khutbah of the Friday, the Jumu'ah prayer, the Jumu'ah salah, during the khutbah you hear the khatib say, If alma shi'ta kama tadinu tudan, Allahu Akbar. If alma shi'ta, do as you please, however you should know, kama tadinu tudan, that as you do will be done upon you. As you do will be done upon you. Now we may just think that as I do will be done upon me, but I'm in the position of superiority. I'm the stronger person. I'm the one with the power and might. How is this going to be done upon me? Remember, number one is that life is ever changing. Life is like that. Someone is wealthy one day and the next day or the next year he is in poverty. Someone is powerful one day and the next day or even the next year he is powerless. Someone has his friends and family to back him one day but the next day or the next year they are not there to back him anymore. Someone has connections in high places but the next day or the next year, he does not have them anymore. Life is ever changing. Our situations are ever changing. If today we are in a position of power, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. If today we have strength, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use it wisely. Because one day we may not have the strength and there will be someone who is more powerful than us that would do to us what we did to others. In Urdu the saying is Jaisi karni, waisi bharni. In English we say what goes around comes around. They all learned this from the hadith of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our beloved Master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the most wise of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had told us much before anyone else could. Kama tadinu tudan. That as you do will be done upon you. So yes, if today we use force against someone else, someday force will be used against us. And then, if we consider that, okay, during my lifetime, I think I will probably always be in this position of superiority or power that I will be able to exert force on others. Then to remember that as much as we think we are powerful, there is a being who is more powerful than us. And there is a being whom we can never find superiority over. That is our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal is more powerful upon us. Allah Azza wa Jal is much more powerful on us than we are on anyone else. In fact, once there was a person who was being harsh to someone who was working under him. So whilst being harsh, whilst reprimanding that person, he heard a voice come from behind him. And the voice said to him, that also and so person, remember that Allah Azza wa Jal has more power over you than you have over that person. Allahu Akbar. 
What a powerful statement. This person is reprimanding someone else. But this person hears a voice from behind him saying that, Remember, oh so and so, remember that Allah Azza wa Jal has more power over you than you have over that person. So full of wisdom, so mighty and powerful, such a statement. If we can just keep this in our minds, that Allah Azza wa Jal has more power over me than I have over anyone else. Then immediately, if ever the thought crosses our mind that we are going to bully so and so person into doing this, or we are going to intimidate the next person, and we just think that this person has less power than me, but my Allah Azza wa Jalla is very much more powerful. And when we realize that, then we will learn. This power that Allah Azza wa Jal has given me should be used in a way that earns Allah's pleasure rather than Allah Azza wa Jal's displeasure. Because if I earn Allah Azza wa Jal's displeasure, then I will be receiving punishment from the might and the power of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's not something we can bear. That's not something that, that we can manage. We must know that as much as we may belittle someone or intimidate them, or we may act cruelly towards someone else. It's just for a short period of time. Life is not very long. We've seen people come and we've seen people go. We've seen youth that have also left this world. Many of us have had perhaps young friends and relatives that have passed on, that are within our age group and within our age category. Life is not very long. We too will leave this world. Don't think that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a power and that we may misuse that power over others, that we may be cruel to others. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that verily Allah Azza wa Jal gives respite to the cruel person until he Azza wa Jal grabs him and he Azza wa Jal does not release him. Allahu Akbar. So if this power that is given to us is being misused, then understand that this is just the respite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. It's just a rope that we can run on for a little while, but there will come a day when that rope, when that respite will end. There will come a day when that respite that we are being given, that muhla that we are being given will come to an end. And that is when Allah Azza wa Jal will take hold of us. Allah Azza wa Jal will hold us accountable for that which we do. And if we are cruel towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then when Allah Azza wa Jal takes hold of us, Allah Azza wa Jal will not leave us. And thus, my honorable viewers of Madani channel, always remember, that we do not want to be in that situation where we are then punished by the most powerful for us misusing our power on others. Whatever little gain it may be, apparently within dunya we may just think that we are gaining something by the misuse of our power. But by us gaining that little look at how much we are losing. Sayyidi Allah Azza wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali has made mention and Shaykh Tariqa Amir al-Sunnat has quoted this in his world-renowned book Fazani Sunnat that if we are to take wrongfully from any believer, misuse our power, or however it is that we wrongfully take something from a believer, something from another Muslim, then what is the punishment for that? Allah Azza wa Ta'ala Ali says that on the day of judgment, we are going to have to repay that. And yes, that is what the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. On the day of judgment, we are going to have to repay whatever it is that we took. But how is it? That's the question. How is it that we are going to repay? Let's say, for example, I take money forcefully from someone else. On the day of judgment, can I just return his money? No. If I force someone into some situation, I took his goods, I took his wealth, I took his business because I'm more powerful than him. So how will I repay him on the day of judgment? Will I be able to give him back his, his business? On the day of judgment, how is the business going to benefit us? On the day of judgment, where are we going to find the wealth that we've taken from other people? Sayyidi Allah Ta'ala Ali 
has mentioned that on the day of judgment for three pesas that's a small amount of money that one has taken wrongfully from someone else how is he going to repay Allah Ta'ala mentions that we will have to exchange we will have to give in return to that person 700 salahs with jama'ah 700 of our salahs 700 of our prayers that are done with congregation with jama'ah Allah Akbar. firstly do we have 700 salah with jama'ah Perhaps, yes, some may have, subhanallah. But I ask, how many, how many of them are we certain about that it is accepted salah with jama'ah? We don't know if 700 of our salah with jama'ah are accepted. But in exchange for three pesas wrongfully taken from another Muslim brother, we need to now give him on the day of judgment 700 of our salahs with jama'ah. Can we afford it? That's the big question. Can we afford it? You know, within our dunya, within our lives, people only spend that which they can afford. If you have wealth, you spend of it. But what would you say about a person who spends that which he cannot afford? The one who spends from that which he cannot afford, he cannot afford his repayment, he cannot afford to purchase something, yet he's spending of that. We will say that this is a foolish person, that raise this man's mind. He's spending when he can't afford. He wants to have that which he cannot afford. We will call him foolish. Now, before we wrongfully take from another Muslim brother, think as well. Can I afford it? Allah Akbar. Can I afford it? That if I'm going to bully him into me taking his business, into me taking his wealth, if I'm going to be harsh on him, I'm going to use my force against him in an oppressive manner, in a cruel manner I'm going to take. Can I afford it? Do I have 700 congregational salahs, 700 salahs performed with jama'ah that is in my account that I'm ready to give him on the day of judgment? Akhi, if we can afford it. If we can afford it, then we can think about doing it. But if you are like me and we cannot afford to give our good deeds away on the day of judgment, then how is it that we can still do things like that? That we can still use our force? That we can still use our power wrongfully against another Muslim within dunya when I cannot afford to pay him back for that on the Day of Judgment? When we think in this manner that yes, when people need to give something within this world, sometimes they cheat their way out. But on the Day of Judgment, where is that opportunity to cheat? Then you are answerable to Allah Azza wa Jal who knows everything. Then there is no way of cheating in that court. On that day we will have to answer for our deeds and that which we have done, we have to answer that which we took, we have to repay. And along that way, whilst taking, whilst intimidating, aren't we hurting the brother's feelings? Aren't we hurting the Muslim brother or the Muslim sister's feelings? Aren't we making them feel small? Aren't we belittling them? And is that liked by Allah Azza wa Jal? Is that loved by the deen of Islam? No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Man aadha musliman faqad aadhani. Allahu Akbar. The one who has caused harm to a Muslim, he has caused harm to the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If I ask you, if I ask, do we want to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do we want to do any wrong towards the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa No. We love him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is our lives. He is our heart. He is our soul. May our lives, the Sahaba ikram would say, Fidaika abi wa ummi ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May my parents be sacrificed upon you, O beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do we want to cause any harm to that Nabi? No. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the one who harms a Muslim, the one who tries to cause harm to a Muslim is causing harm to the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the one who tries to cause harm to me is trying to cause harm to Allah azza wa jal. And we cannot, we cannot manage trying to cause harm to Allah azza wa jal. The effects of that are very detrimental. Allah azza wa jal is all powerful. Allah azza wa jal is all powerful. We cannot try to cause harm to Allah Azza wa Jal because we cannot manage the effects of that. 
We cannot try to cause harm to the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because we cannot manage the effects of that. Allah Akbar. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Holy Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا مُهِينًا Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us that the one who tries to cause harm to Allah or his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Azza wa Jal curses that person in the dunya and in the akhirah. Allah Azza wa Jal curses that person in this world and in the hereafter. And Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for that person a very painful punishment. Such a painful punishment someone is going to receive. Someone is going to receive the curse of Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because he tried to harm Allah Azza wa Jal and his beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we may just think that I'm not trying to harm Allah Azza wa Jal and his beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm just harming the next person. I'm just intimidating the next person. I'm just lowering the next person. I'm just bullying the next person. I'm being cruel to the next person. How am I harming Allah? How am I harming the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah وسلم, said that if you try to cause harm to the believer, you are trying to cause harm to Allah and his beloved Nabi The honor of the believer is so high in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is so great in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once Rasulullah stood before the blessed Kaaba, the magnificent Kaaba, Baytullah. Allah Akbar. That Kaaba that you and I desire to see, we dream to see. We close our eyes and hope to see it in our dreams. We work hard and sacrifice and try to save so that we may go to the blessed land to see Kaabatullah. Once Rasulullah looked towards the Kaaba and said, How magnificent are you, O Kaaba? How wonderful is your blessed fragrance, O Kaaba? But the honor of a believer, the honor of a believer is even greater than yours. The honor of the believer. The honor of his mal, the honor of his wealth, the honor of his blood, meaning his, his being. His honor is even greater than that of the Kaaba. Which of us will desecrate the Kaaba? None of us. We will not stand to witness the desecration of the Kaaba. And how is it that we can then desecrate the honor of another believer by being cruel to him, by bullying him, by intimidating him, by being harsh on him, by using our power wrongfully against him? May Allah protect us. What should be our way? Our way should be that we should be gentle to the believer. We should be soft and kind to the believer. Allah Akbar. When someone see a Muslim should be that way. Rasulullah said, Al Muslimu, Man Salim al Muslimuna, Millisanihi, Wayadihi, that the believer is that person whom other believers are safe from any harm that could reach them through his hands and his tongue. My honorable viewers of Madani channel, the one bullying others, is he fitting this definition, this understanding of what a believer should be? Is he fitting this understanding of what a Muslim should be? So at that point, at that point of bullying the next person, is the next person safe from any harm from our hands? No. Is the per next person safe from any harm from our tongue? No. We are intimidating them. We are bullying them. We are using our force against them. We are being cruel to them. How are they safe? And Rasulullah has said that the believer is that one whom other Muslims, the Muslim is that person whom other Muslims are safe from any harm that could reach them through that person's hands or that person's tongue. We want to be good Muslims, isn't it? We want to be good Muslims by the definitions given by the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه A believer is one whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that none of you is a true believer. None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Do we love for our brothers to be in that position that we are placing others in? Do we love for our brothers to be bullied by others? To be treated harshly by others? Allah Akbar. No. We want for our brothers and ourselves to be treated with gentleness. And to be treated with kindness. Once the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Azza wa Jal is gentle. Allah Azza wa Jal is gentle. Look at how merciful Allah has been on us. How gentle Allah Azza wa Jal has been with us.
subhanallah and allah azza wa jal loves gentleness allah azza wa jal is gentle and allah azza wa jal loves gentleness and due to gentleness allah azza wa jal grants that which he azza wa jal does not grant due to harshness that if we are going to be harsh we are not going to receive that which allah azza wa jal grants through gentleness so many times if you require something from someone try to ask kindly softly with a smile with love with respect and you will see that you will receive but when we use our power and ask in a harsh tone and intimidate the person and then we think that that's going to bring about surety that we're going to get what we want we are not going to actually accomplish our tasks even if someone gives they will give with a heavy heart and we will be accountable for that on the day of judgment we will not be able to repay that person on the day of judgment for the wrongs that we have done to him however if we are kind if we are soft if we are gentle you know there's a beautiful saying in english as well that with kindness you can pull an elephant by a hair beautiful saying with kindness you can pull an elephant by a hair meaning something that is such a big task you can do with such little means in such a simple way just because of being kind and because of being gentle yet with harshness the same tasks cannot be accomplished so my honorable viewers of madani channel please remember whenever we feel that we are in a position of power and that we may bully the next person just think remember allah azza wa jal has more power over us then we have over the next person allah azza wa jal grant us tawfiq to make amal to act upon what we have learned amin bi jahi khatam an nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stay tuned continue watching madani channel and we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the challenges of youth only on madani channel sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the challenges of youth O youth in the path of Islam stand tall O youth in the path of Islam stand tall with patience and prayer you shall not fall with patience and prayer you shall not fall